Hey guys, it's Natasha and welcome to my channel. If you're looking for a therapist and you're not sure what to look out for, here are 10 green flags that this might be a good therapist for you. Number one, they guide you. Like I mentioned in my last video, a good therapist is a guide. They might nudge you in the right direction, but they won't directly tell you what to do. I personally like a therapist who can kind of push me out of my comfort zone without making me feel too anxious. A good therapist encourages you to make your own decisions and discover yourself. Number two, they make therapy about you. Therapy is all about the client. A good therapist will go at your pace and do what works best for you in terms of therapy. If something isn't working, your therapist should try to adjust what they're doing to try to suit your needs better. A good therapist won't take it personally if you say you don't like their communication style, if you try to clarify what you're saying, or even if you tell them that you don't think therapy is working. They will try their best to accommodate your needs. This is a service that you've hired them for and you should get what you paid for within reason. Also remember that therapy isn't magic. Number three, they get to know you as a person. A good therapist will try to get to know you as a person and not just treat you like a number. They'll try to get to know your likes and your dislikes and incorporate them into therapy. I personally like it when a therapist knows when to change a subject to something lighthearted like TV show that I like or my weekend plans when I'm getting too anxious. Therapy can actually be fun sometimes and you shouldn't leave feeling worse than when you came in. Ideally, you should leave feeling better. Number four, they help you decompress at the end of the session. Speaking of leaving feeling better than before, your therapist should help you decompress at the end of your sessions, especially if you say you need to. This can take the form of guiding you through a simple meditation or a quick breathing exercise, making sure that you've said everything you need to say, making a plan for next session, or whatever you need in the moment. Number five, they vibe well with you. A great green flag is if you and your therapist actually get along. You understand each other, you're comfortable joking around, and you can talk about anything. While the client-therapist relationship is technically a professional contract, it shouldn't just be dry and robotic. Getting along well with your therapist actually helps make therapy easier. It's really good to try to find things you have in common. Number six, they understand your culture and beliefs. You don't have to have things in common for your therapist to respect you. Your therapist should at least try to understand your culture and where you're coming from, even if they don't share it. For instance, a person of color or a first generation American will have a different family dynamic than someone whose ancestors came over on the Mayflower. A good therapist will try to understand your cultural background or even your belief system because that will have a big impact on how therapy will play out. And this doesn't just apply to your ethnic culture, but also your religion, gender, generational, socioeconomic, or any other culture you might belong to. Number seven, they're accommodating. It's important for your therapist to be flexible. If you need certain accommodations, like the option of telehealth appointments or a sign language interpreter, flexibility with scheduling, or even comfortable seating, etc., your therapist should be willing to meet those needs. This is more than just a legal requirement. Your therapist should want to make you feel comfortable and safe in therapy. Number eight, their office is comfortable for you. Your therapist's office should be comfortable for you. I consider it a green flag if my therapist has like fidget toys to play with, a soothing sound machine, or comfortable seating. One therapist I had had this beanbag chair in the corner that I always sat in. Another one offered art supplies so I could color or doodle during therapy. If you're seeing your therapist in person, make sure that you are comfortable in their office, whether that's a cozy little corner to sit in or an open space if you want to pace around, whatever you need. Number nine, they give you the concrete help you ask for. If you know what you need in therapy, you have a right to seek it out. A good therapist will be able to help you achieve your goals and meet your needs. For example, if they say that they're trained in something like DBT or CBT or EMDR, they should offer it to you and actually follow through on that offer. If you need something more concrete like a bedtime ritual or a self-care plan, they'll help with that too. Number 10, they give you an out. A good therapist will want you to get the most out of therapy and they're smart and humble enough to know when they can't give you what you need. Some might even recommend another therapist for you. It's hard to know after just one session if a therapist is a good fit for you, so one therapist told me that when she meets with a new therapist, 
she gives them about three to four sessions and then goes from there. And I think it's a pretty good rule to follow. You should take the time to get to know your therapist to make sure that they're the right fit for you. And it's a green flag if they understand that and make it easy for you to leave, both logistically and emotionally or mentally. So that was 10 green flags to look out for in a therapist. Thank you for watching and if you're looking for red flags to look out for, check out my last video.